so I'm a Christian. Um, and the new IFP movement is not a denomination. It's not like Methodist or Catholic or something like this. It's just people that believe the same way um, and they have fellowship together. They, we consider ourselves part of a new independent fundamental Baptist movement. Independent means each church is independent. It means it's not being controlled by um, a pope or something like this. We're not being told what to believe by the pope. We're independent. And fundamental means we believe um, these certain fundamentals about Christianity, certain very basic, important teachings of Christianity. And the things that we believe in the new IFP movement, you can find them at the bottom. So we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11. We have like 12 um, beliefs here, which um, make us distinct um, from other, any other denomination of Christianity. And I believe that these teachings are some of the fundamentals of what the Bible teaches. And I don't consider myself part of a new religion or anything like this. I believe Christianity has always taught this and the Bible has always taught these things. And, but there's very few Christians today that believe like this. Most Christians, I think, are actually not saved. Like most people that call themselves Christian, I think they're actually not saved and they're not even going to heaven um, because they reject some of these basic fundamentals of Christianity. And that's all the new IFP movement is. It's people that just believe the traditional, normal beliefs from the Bible, from Christianity. Because many, many people now no longer believe biblical Christianity. They rather join some cult like, you know, this Jehovah's Witness or Mormon or something like this, which is not Christianity. But like I said, there's some basic fundamentals which we believe and inside here you have a little bit of an explanation about each one and there's a couple of videos for each one which you can watch and learn more um, what I want to talk about today is just the first one I just want to discuss what is faith alone for salvation because I want to help you to understand you know what we believe and so the first one is faith alone for salvation. Um, if you open it up, there's a little bit of an explanation on the inside. Underneath the faith alone for salvation, it says, Jesus Christ died on the cross, was buried and rose again on the third day to pay for the sins of the world. And then it says salvation and salvation means being saved. Like if you want God to save you, salvation is obtained by trusting Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross to pay for our sins. All of one's faith or all of your faith needs to be on what Jesus did. You do not have to repent of your sins or commit your life to Christ to be saved. Faith alone in a death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ is what saves you. And then we have two videos at the bottom to help explain that. But this is a basic explanation of what is this belief. So I believe in faith alone for salvation. And I'm gonna, I have a few Bible verses which I wanna share with you just to show you uh, from the Bible um, what this is all about. Um, because there's two main things people get wrong about salvation. Um, it's probably gonna take me, I think, 20, 30 minutes to look through all the different verses because I want to make sure you understand what is faith alone for salvation. Many people are wrong for two reasons about how to be saved. Number one reason, people think you have to do good things or be a good person or do good works to be saved. I don't believe that. I believe in faith alone. So many people think you have to do good works. Many people think you have to repent of your sins to be saved which means you have to change your lifestyle and stop sinning if you want to be saved. I don't believe that. I believe faith alone. So what, like your faith and only your faith is what saves you. There's nothing else you have to do to be saved. So I have some verses I wanna go through. And first of all, I wanna talk about 
show you some verses which explain faith alone for salvation. So the first one is in Acts chapter 16, because this is probably the most obvious and easiest to understand verse in the Bible about faith alone for salvation. So Acts chapter 16, verse 30 and 31. If you, you can look in Levy's uh, Bible, you can see in here, faith alone for salvation. So Acts chapter 16, verse 30, it says, and brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? So there's a question in the Bible here. What must I do to be saved? So this man wants to be saved. He wants to go to heaven. The answer is in the next verse. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. So the answer is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. So this is a verse here which shows you that the only thing you must do to be saved is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's your faith alone. He did not say go to church and you'll be saved or repent of your sins and you'll be saved. The only thing is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So he gives him one thing. So this is faith alone. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ alone and you'll be saved. So in the next verses I want to show you is in John chapter 3. And I'm going to show you two verses in John chapter 3. We have John chapter 3 verse 15 and verse 16. I just want to show you these verses. So John 3 15. So the Bible says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So we have two verses here from Jesus which say anybody that believes in him has eternal life. And in the next verse he says whosoever believeth in him will have everlasting life. So in these two verses Jesus says anyone that believes in me has eternal life. Anyone that believes in me has everlasting life. He does not say get baptized and you'll be saved. Go to church and you'll be saved. Be a good person, you'll be saved. He says, anyone that believes in me will have eternal life. So these are another two verses which show you that it's your faith alone that saves you. It's your faith alone. It's not about being a good person. It's not about repenting of your sins. It's about your faith alone that saves you. And also in uh, the Gospel of John, in John chapter 6, verse 47, Jesus again has another very clear verse. John 6, 47 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So again, Jesus says, If you believe in me, you have everlasting life. Jesus does not say, Be a good person and you'll be saved, or repent of your sins and you'll be saved. He says, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So we have another verse which shows you that it's your faith alone that saves you. Now, there are many, many, many verses in the Bible which show you that it's your faith alone that saves you. And I could spend many hours looking at every single verse, but I've shown you like three examples there of faith alone. So if you believe the Bible, then you have to accept that it's your faith alone that saves you because I've shown you three verses there which show you that it's faith alone. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Whoever believes in me has eternal life. So it's faith alone. Now, the main um, uh, problem people have is that they think it's your good works that save you, or they think being a good person saves you, or you have to be a good person to be saved, or you have to do certain things that you have to be baptized or you have to go to church or you have to do good works to be saved. I'm going to show you uh, two verses about this. The first is in Ephesians chapter 2. So like I said, many people think you have to do good works to go to heaven. It's not true. It's faith alone. So Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So these two verses show you that you are saved by grace through faith. 
and it's only your faith. There's nothing else. It says it's not of yourselves. So you cannot save yourself. Being a good person cannot save you. It says it's through faith. Then it says it is the gift of God. So eternal life is free. It is a gift. God is giving you a gift. All you have to do is have faith. Verse 9 says, not of works, lest any man should boast. So it's not your good works that save you. It's your faith that saves you. It's your faith alone. So these two verses show you again that you're saved by faith. It's not of works. It's not your good works. It's not being a good person that saves you. You do not have to be a good person to go to heaven, but you must have faith in Jesus Christ to go to heaven. That's the only way to go to heaven. But most people don't believe that. Most, even most Christians think that you have to believe in Jesus and follow the commandments. Or you have to believe in Jesus and be a good person and go to church and get baptized. I don't believe that. The new IFB movement does not believe that. We believe it's your faith alone that saves you because that's what the Bible very, very clearly teaches. Um, if we look at Titus chapter 3, verse 5, I have another very clear verse in Titus chapter 3, verse 5 about your faith alone. So Titus chapter 3 verse 5, there's a verse talking about how we are saved and it says not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So the first half of the verse says it's not by works of righteousness which we have done. So the good works we have done do not save us. It says, but according to his mercy, he saved us. So it's God's grace, it's God's mercy that saves us. It's not our good works. It's not our works of righteousness that save us. So the Bible, all throughout the New Testament, it tells us that it's your faith alone that saves you and it's not of works. So I've just shown you two verses which explain that it's not your good works that save you. It's your faith that saves you. So good works don't save you. And good works have nothing to do with your salvation. So many people think that you have to do good works to be saved, it's not true. And many people think that after you're saved, you have to do good works to maintain your salvation. It's not true. It's faith alone. And when you believe, God gives you eternal life. Eternal is forever. So the moment you believe, Jesus says, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So if you believe on Jesus, you have eternal life right now, and you'll always have eternal life. But we'll talk more about that topic next time. Today, I'm just focusing on faith alone for salvation. Um, I wanna turn to James chapter two, because this is what many people get confused about, is they see these verses in James chapter two, and they think that uh, the Bible teaches you have to do good works, like faith and works to be saved. Um, and if we look in uh, like verse 17, well, if you start in verse 14, many people will turn here and it says, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Um, in verse 17, it says, Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, uh, being alone. Verse 18, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. So, and verse 20 says, faith without works is dead. So many people will go to these verses and say, the Bible says faith without works is dead. So it's not faith alone. But what the Bible is actually talking about here is, there's a difference between justification before God and being justified before man. So if you have faith alone, without works, your faith is dead. But that does not mean you're not saved. It just means your faith is not productive. Your faith is not producing anything, right? So many Christians, they believe in Jesus Christ. So they have faith and they have eternal life, but they don't do any work. So their faith is dead, which it doesn't mean your faith does not exist. It means your faith is not productive. So many people will say, well, the Bible says faith without works is dead. So you have to do works as well as have faith. But that's not what it says. It just shows you that if you have faith and you don't do good works, 
you're still saved, but your faith is not productive. It's not helping anybody and you're not going to have any rewards in heaven. Your faith is, is not producing. It's just like, it's like a, a tree that doesn't bring any fruit. It's still a tree, but it's just unfruitful. So there's many Christians who are unfruitful. Their faith is dead. They still have faith, but it's dead. It's not producing anything. But this is the main place people will turn to um, when they try to say that you have to do good works as well as have faith. But the Bible explains what it means here. Like if you look in verse 23 of James 2, James 2, 23, it says, uh, the scripture was fulfilled, which saith Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. And it says, you see then how that by works, a man is justified and not by faith only. So it uses the example of Abraham and it says Abraham had faith and works and his works justified him. What this means is that his good works uh, justified him in front of other people. His faith justified him before God and then his works justified him before man. Because if you go all the way back to Genesis 15, it explains um, that Abraham believed God. So Genesis 15 verse 6. So in James chapter 2 it says Abraham had faith and he had works. So in Genesis 15 um, verse 6 it says here, talking about Abraham it says, and he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. So Abraham believed in the Lord and he was made righteous. He was saved. So Abraham had faith alone. He was saved by faith alone. He believed in the Lord and he was saved. And then if you look in Galatians uh, 3, 6, there's another verse to explain this. Galatians 3, 6. And again, it talks about um, Abraham. So Galatians 3, 6, it says, even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. So it says right here, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So it's Abraham's faith that saved him. So Abraham had faith and God saved him. And then Abraham also did works and it justified him before man. And it allowed him to gain rewards in heaven and other people could see his faith but you know Abraham the Bible tells us that he believed in God and God saved him because of that so it's your faith alone that saves you now this also proves that it's always been faith alone for salvation because Abraham back in Genesis he believed in God and he was saved and us today we believe in Jesus Christ and we're saved so it's always been faith alone. From the beginning of time until forever, it's always going to be faith alone for salvation. In the Old Testament, it was faith alone for salvation. In the New Testament, it's faith alone for salvation. And today and the future, it's gonna be faith alone for salvation. It's always the way that God has done it. And one of the reasons is if you look in Romans 11, it has an explanation. Romans 11 verse 6 remember we looked at the verse before where it says by grace are you saved through faith now Romans 11 6 helps to explain this a bit more it says if by grace so if you're saved by grace it says then is it no more of works otherwise grace is no more grace but if it be of works then is it no more grace otherwise work is no more work so Romans 11, 6 says, if you're saved by grace, it's not to do with your works. It's no more of works. It's not your works that saved you. But if it be of works, so if you try to save yourself with good works, it's no more grace. You're not saved by grace. If you try to save yourself through good works, you're not saved by grace. So Romans 11, 6 says, it's either faith or works. You cannot mix them together. You either have faith in Jesus Christ and you're saved or you try to do good works to be saved, but you won't be saved by doing that. It's only through your faith that can save you. Um, so the, the two points I want you to remember today is, 
it's not your good works that save you. You don't have to do good works to be saved. And the Bible tells us it's your faith alone that saves you, and it's nothing to do with your works. You don't have to do good works before you get saved. You don't have to do good works after you get saved. The second point is that it's not to do with repenting of your sins. And repenting of your sins does not save you. And it has nothing to do with your salvation. Now, many people say, well, yeah, you have to repent of your sins to be saved. What that means is if you have to repent of your sins to be saved, it means you have to stop sinning to be saved or you have to turn away from your sins to be saved. But that's not what the Bible teaches. It teaches faith alone. So I want to look at uh, Matthew 3, verse 2, because many people, they read this word in the Bible and it confuses them. So if you start in verse 1, so Matthew 3, 1, it says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So John the Baptist was preaching, you have to repent. And Jesus later, he came and Jesus said, you have to repent. So we have many people in the Bible saying, you have to repent. John the Baptist said, you've got to repent. Jesus said, you have to repent. But here's where people get confused, is many people, they see the word repent and they automatically add some extra words and they say repent of your sins but john the baptist did not say repent of your sins he just says repent jesus did not say repent of your sins to be saved he just said repent and we need to get a, a definition of what is the word repent what does it mean so if you go to jonah chapter 3 so jonah chapter 3 And if you look in verse 9, Jonah here says, Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them and he did it not. So verse 9 shows us that the word repent, it means turn. It says, who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away? So the word repent, it just means turn. It means to change direction or to change what you believe or to change what you think. The word repent does not mean turn away from sin. The word repent just means to turn because the Bible says that God repented. So God repents many times in the Bible. So it means God changed what he was going to do. He changed his action or he changed um, but in this verse it says he changed from he turned away from his anger so he wasn't angry anymore it doesn't mean he turned from his sins because God has never sinned and God cannot sin so when God repents he's not turning from sin he's just turning from something and it says here in verse 10 God saw their works so God saw that these people were doing works they were doing good works and it says they turn from their evil way. So the Bible defines turning from your evil way as works. So if you try to turn from your evil way, you turn from your sins to be saved, it says you're doing works to be saved. Because turning from your sins and turning from your evil ways is defined as works. God defines turning from your sins as good works. So repenting from your sins is a good thing, but it's not faith alone. Repenting of your sins doesn't save you it's actually uh, works and the Bible says you're not saved by works so the Bible defines repent as to turn from or to turn away so if we go back to Matthew 3 again we look at those verses again with this new definition in our mind so Matthew chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 it says in those days came John the Baptist preaching the wilderness of Judea and saying repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand so he's saying here, remember, repent means to turn. So John the Baptist is saying, turn, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Turn away, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So what is he saying to turn away from or turn to? If you look in uh, Matthew 21, verse 32, the Bible defines it. 
So Matthew 21 verse 32, Jesus explains what John was preaching. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not, but the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward, that you might believe him. So in this verse, Jesus says, John was preaching repentance, and he was saying, you have to repent. But he said, you did not repent. You repented not afterward, that ye might believe him. So Jesus says here, you did not repent because you did not believe him. So your repentance is, is changing what you believe. So you do have to repent to be saved, but it means you have to turn or you change what you believe. So these people did not believe in Jesus Christ, and then they repented and they did believe in Jesus Christ. So that's how you, that's what repentance is when it comes to salvation. And then if you look in Acts chapter 19, verse four, it's a, another definition of what John the Baptist was preaching. So Acts 19, verse four, it said, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. So he said, yes, John was baptizing people and he was telling people you have to repent. It says here, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. So John the Baptist was saying to the people, you have to believe on Jesus Christ. And people repented, which means they changed what they believed and they believed on Jesus Christ. And if they did that, he baptized them. All right, so John the Baptist is preaching the same message back then that we are preaching today, that you have to believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. So John the Baptist was preaching faith alone for salvation. And if people believed it, then he would baptize them, right? So the Bible defines repentance as turning or changing. So it does not say turn from your sins to be saved, but you do have to turn what you believe or you have to change what you believe to be saved. So an unsaved person does not believe on Jesus Christ. If they want to be saved, they have to change what they believe and they have to believe on Jesus Christ. So they repent and they believe on Jesus Christ. Now, the next thing I want to look at is um, if you look at John chapter 20, verse 31, I've just got probably one or two more verses to show you, and then I'm finished. So John chapter 20, verse 31, it says, so the Gospel of John is a very, very famous book in the Bible, and the Gospel of John explains the purpose for why it's written. So John chapter 20, 31, it says, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. So the reason the book of John was written was so that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. So the reason for this book is to help you believe in Jesus Christ. And it says, if you believe in him, you will have life. You will have eternal life. So the only thing you have to do to have eternal life is to believe that Jesus died for your sins, he was buried and then he rose again. He physically rose again from the grave. And that's it. It's so simple. Every or many, many other churches or denominations, they make it so complicated. And they say, you have to get baptized and you have to attend this church or you have to go to um, the JIL church or the Jehovah's Witness church or the Mormon church or something. You have to go here to be saved. The Bible just teaches you just have to believe on Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. It does not matter where you come from or how much money you have or what, even what church you go to. All that matters is, do you believe on Jesus Christ alone, like faith alone for salvation or not? And that's the only thing you have to do to be saved. The Gospel of John says, yeah, this is written so that you would believe that Jesus is the Christ. And the Gospel of John never has the word repent in the whole book. So if you have to repent of your sins to be saved, then the Gospel of John is worthless because the Gospel of John says, I've written this book so that you can be saved. But the Gospel of John never says the word, never says repent of your sins in the whole book of John. It just proves that the only thing you have to do to be saved is believe. Because back in John chapter 3, he says, whoever believes in me has eternal life. So one of the, or the most basic 
fundamental uh, doctrine which we believe in the new IFB is faith alone for salvation. It's your faith and only your faith which saves you. And when you're saved, you will always be saved. So next time we talk, I'm going to talk about once saved, always saved, which is the second thing. Basically, what that means is the moment you believe on Jesus Christ, God saves you and he gives you eternal life. And you will always have eternal life. You will always be saved. Even if you sin, you are still saved. If you sin, God will discipline you, but you're still saved. So that's what I said. You don't have to do good works after you're saved or before you're saved. The only thing you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. So for me, five years ago, I heard the gospel and I put my faith in Jesus Christ. I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and God saved me. And since that moment, I've always had eternal life because Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So I believed on Jesus Christ and I had everlasting life. God gave me everlasting life. Now, five years later, I still have everlasting life because it's everlasting. It is eternal. It will last forever. So in a thousand years, I will still have everlasting life. In a million years, I'll still have everlasting life. Until the end of time, I will have everlasting life because it means it lasts forever. And I don't have to do good works to maintain my everlasting life. The only thing, is God has me in his hand. My soul is in the hand of God and I'll always have eternal life. You know, Jesus says, I give unto them eternal life, they'll never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So the moment you believe on Jesus Christ, God gives you eternal life. He does not ask for you to do good works. He does not say, oh, give me money and I'll give you eternal life. Or be a good person and I'll give you eternal life. Or get baptized and I'll give you eternal life. God just says, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, I'll give you eternal life. So that's, it's that simple. There's no hidden, there's no mysteries. There's nothing secret or hidden about it. You know, like the Catholic Church will make being saved very, very difficult. They say you have to be baptized and you have to take communion. You have to confess to the priest. You have to do many, many things. The Bible doesn't teach that, it just teaches faith alone for salvation. The only thing you have to do to be saved is believe on Jesus Christ and believe that Jesus died for your sins and he rose again physically from the grave. That's it. If you believe that, the Bible says you are saved. You know, the Bible teaches that God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. These three are one. That Jesus is the Son of God and that he died for your sins and rose again. And if you have 100% faith in that, you're saved and you'll always be saved. Even if you sin, you're still saved. Even if you kill yourself, you're still saved. Even if you commit murder, you're still saved. You'll always be saved. Because it's your soul that's saved. It's not your body that's saved, it's your soul. When you believe on Jesus Christ, God gives your soul eternal life. Your soul will always have eternal life. Even if your body dies, even if you kill yourself, even if you sin, you still have eternal life. Okay, so just to make a conclusion, the first fundamental thing we believe in the new IFB movement is faith alone for salvation. And that means the only thing you have to do to be saved is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. And it also means if somebody does not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they're not saved and they're going to hell. And it also means if a Christian comes to you and tells you you have to have faith and works to be saved, they are not saved. Every saved person believes in faith alone for salvation. So if there's a Christian out there or a pastor out there or a church out there which teaches differently than faith alone for salvation, they are not saved. They are going to hell. They are not saved. The only people in the world that are saved are the people that believe in faith alone for salvation. And yeah, there's many people that believe that. There's many, many Christians in the world that believe in faith alone for salvation. But unfortunately, many churches and many pastors and Christians do not teach this. They teach you have to do good works, you have to repent of your sins, you have to get baptized. They're not saved. The only people that are saved are ones that believe in faith alone for salvation. Okay, does that make sense? You understand that? Okay, so the last verse I'm going to show you, I want to go to Romans chapter 10. And we'll just finish in Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verse uh, 9. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 11, for the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Verse 12, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So the Bible says, if you believe that Jesus died for you and rose again, if you believe that in your heart, you should confess it to God with your mouth. You know, anyone that believes in Christ is saved, and what you should do is you should confess it unto God with your mouth. So, what we, I can help you to, we can finish in prayer today, and I can help you to say a short prayer, and you have to make the decision in your heart, in your mind, if, do you believe that Jesus Christ the Son of God and that He died for your sins and rose again. You have to make that decision in your heart, in your mind. So I'll ask you, I'll ask you a question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins? You believe that, okay. And do you believe that Jesus rose again after He died? Okay. And what do you have to do to be saved? Yes, faith alone. What do you believe about it? What do you have to do to be saved? Yeah, you just have faith. That's it, it's your faith alone, that's what we looked at. And remember I said, after you're saved, you'll always be saved. So what if today you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and tomorrow you sin? Will you still go to heaven? Yeah, you will. So even if it's a big sin, what if today you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, tomorrow you kill yourself? Will your soul still go to heaven? Yeah, it will still go to heaven. God will discipline you. So you shouldn't sin, it's bad, but it doesn't take away your eternal life. So for me, I sin every day, because even a foolish thought is sin. Even having a wrong thought is a sin. You know, so every day I sin, I'm not perfect, but God doesn't take away eternal life from me. You know, he disciplines me, you know, because God disciplines his children. But if you have faith in Jesus Christ, you are saved. You don't have to do good works to be saved. You don't have to turn away from your sins to be saved. You just have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So like it says in Romans chapter 10, you know, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I can help you to pray and you can just make sure today that you're saved. Make a decision in your heart and in your mind that you are choosing with your own free will, you're choosing to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you believe it's faith alone in Jesus Christ that's going to save you. Okay, I can help you to pray. We can just say a very short prayer. We can pray responsively. So I can pray and you can repeat after me. But repeating a prayer doesn't save you. What saves you is your faith. Remember, faith alone for salvation. But God wants you to confess it to him. All right, so we can pray together. I'll pray. You can repeat after me, but you must believe it. All right, let's pray together. We can close our prayer. Dear God, and you repeat after me. Dear God, I know that I am a sinner and I deserve to go to hell, but I believe Jesus died for me and rose again. Please forgive my sins. Please give me eternal life. I'm only trusting you, Jesus. I'm not trusting my good works. Please save me right now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, the Bible says if you believe that in your heart, you're saved, right? And you have eternal life. So this is the first and it's the most important thing which we believe is faith alone for salvation. So what I recommend for you to do is on this paper, we have a couple of YouTube sermons which you can watch on YouTube. The first one is called Repentance and Salvation. So if you search on YouTube for this sermon, Repentance and Salvation Baptist Preaching, you can find this on YouTube and I recommend you watch it and make sure you really understand it. And then the second one is called Lordship Salvation is a Works-Based Salvation. But first I recommend watching this first one. It's a bit shorter and it'll be easy for you to understand. 
Repentance and Salvation Baptist Preaching. If you search for that on YouTube or Levy can send it to you or something like this, I recommend watching that. It's just less than one hour. Watch that and you know pray about it and think about it because this is the first and most important thing. If you understand this, you know, then we can continue and look at the other doctrines together. But like I said, the most important thing we believe is faith alone for salvation. All right.